This week, episode 282 of Stogie Geeks, we have the opportunity to interview Raul Flores, who's the marketing director for CLE Cigars. I've done a little bit of pirating, and I have the Don Carlos uh, 2018 Eye of the Shock, Stick of the Year. Aaron and I are going to have that and light that up. We have Russ via Skype with his commentary on some of the sticks of the week that he's been smoking and an interesting uh, conversation with Aaron, who is here in studio, all right here on this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. This is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, aka Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. And Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Welcome to this edition of Stogie Geeks. This is episode 282 of Stogie Geeks. I am your host this week, Joe Hosempa. I have uh, in studio, we have Aaron from Ireland, and we have some customer feedback. Some customers want some answers, and customers have request and by the way you want to stick around for this because i hid all of the emails from aaron and we're totally going off the cuff right there in our second segment we have the opportunity to interview raul flores from cle cigars he's director of marketing we're gonna have an awesome conversation about that because he went to ibcpr this year but he's going to talk about his first trip and how we went in under two different uh capacities he's been in the cigar industry for a little bit over five years now and we're going to get some of his feedback and take. But right now, we're going to do Sticks of the Week. We have Russ Evers chilling in sunny Naples, Florida via Skype. Russ, how's it going? What's going on, Joe? What's going on, Aaron? Great ha- to see you guys. Yeah, good to see you. Oh, Hi, Russ. Good to, good see, to you. see you. Again. Good to see you again. Um, it is Skype, so we don't have like a teleport or anything. We are doing the uh, stick today. Um, and this came to me literally like, I mean, seconds right before the show. Uh, we are doing the Arturo Fluente Don Carlos Eye of the Shock. That's a nice one. It is a nice one. I'm excited. <laughs> We're excited. Where did you guys come across that? Uh, oh, next door. Next door. We walked in and said, yeah, we need sticks, and this is what I need, this is what I need. And they're like, oh, we just got these eye of the Okay, that's it. I don't need those sticks no more. We're going to need it over here. And I, <laughs> that's pretty much how the conversation went. And we walked out. Uh, we've go- uh, grabbed a couple of drinks going over here. I got my uh, Bloody Mary. Love Bloody Marys. Very nice. Uh, Aaron's doing a little bit of Jack and Coke. Yeah, and then- I'm supporting the American economy this week. Yeah, I'm man. moving away from the Irish economy. <laughs> I thought I'd support. I, su- I thought I'd support you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, if you are, are viewing this, you don't have problems with your computer. We have uh, matching ish uh, t-shirts. Or I, I guess it's Team Cobra Kai for sure. Um, both after uh, a discussion, which lasted probably about 15, 20 minutes, Aaron and I have decided that we would probably get kicked out of Miyagi Do Karate. Yeah, there's no way we'd have ever lasted. It's like, it'd be like, wax on, wax off. It's like, I'll wax your little bald head if you want. <laughs> as long as you don't sweep his leg, he'll be expected. <laughs> I like that. Russ, uh, just getting on the subject. Have you ever seen that series, Cobra Kai? It's brand new on yeah. Netflix. Raph Machio made a comeback, so he's yeah. got a good agent, but I haven't seen it yet. Dude, let me tell you something. It, it's It's kind of funny because obviously... Um, you know, we we're talking about the Karate Kid, and I'm not talking about the the the, the ruined Jada Pinkett, whatever Smith ruined version of Karate Kid. I'm talking about the original one with the Italian stallion, and uh, you know, it, it's so funny to get John Lawrence's take on like Danielle and stuff like that. I won't ruin it for any of the listeners and whatnot, but as you you really have one of those aha moments, like, huh. I never even thought of it that way. You know what I mean? And so it's pretty cool. Uh, if you, the Stogie Geeks listener, uh, have listened to it or whatever and you want to chime in on that, you can do so. You can try to comment to us over on the live stream. Maybe the producers will bark it in my ear. And we can have some, some dialogue uh, going on there. So anyway, sticks of the week. Here we are. What have you been smoking, Russ? 
Well, I started off with the Kane F. Uh, it's a straight Lajero, mm. but um, it had Habano, Lancero, kind of filler. Uh, the wrapper was Habano, binder, Nicaraguan filler, Nicaraguan, really where it came from. But I went to the shop and I saw this and I was like, you know, I like this wrapper. I like the way it looks. Felt it in my hands and I smoked it. And the deeper I got into it, the stronger it became. But there was just something about it. The draw was great. Mm. And I said, for Kane, I wasn't a fan of didn't put him on the map. But this one, I actually went back and got two more this week. So I got to tell you, that spicy pepper all the way through really set this one apart. And I said, it's going to be in my rotation. Mm. Yeah. Now, correct me. Uh, I'm not putting. I'm putting you on the spot. I'm very scatterbrained today. Uh, what color is the label on that? Do you remember off the top of your head? Is, is that the orange one? I'm just, but the only reason why I'm asking is because I, I associate things with like labels and stuff like that. So I'm trying to figure out like what what's uh, which one that was. This one had a red label. Uh, okay. The Daytona is the orange. Gotcha. Okay, great. I just want to make sure so I have a conversation. Thank you for that. Okay. So the Cane Daytona seems to be a little bit lighter. And the Cane um, uh, F, right, is the one you had with the red label, yep. seems to have a little bit more of that pepper bite and stuff like that. What was the size? I know you said it, but what was the size for, for the listeners? I had that one. Lancero? And the Lancero, yep. but it also comes in a Robusto and a Torpedo and Double Toro. Mm. Uh, it's just all about how much you can handle with the strong ones. Yeah, and sure. i got to tell you, the deeper you go into it, the, it had taste all the way through, and it only got stronger. So as long as I expected it, totally able to handle it. Dark, oily, rich, got some wood out of that, but the pepper, that's what really makes a good stick for me. So The pepper. Okay. Oh, wow. It's like, is that pepper? Is that, can you get the different tones of pepper? Like, um, I guess you have like um, dark pepper and green peppers and red peppers. Are you getting the real good, strong dark pepper in that? It was a dark, blackish pepper. Uh, I've had the other ones by like uh, BIA and stuff like that, like ghost pepper, uh, green and all that, but... This one just dark pepper all the way through. Yeah, really made it stand out in a nice. And- yeah, usually with with that specific region of the country, um, describing it uh, when when you first light it up, you you have a a, a strong pepper component, and it's uh, black or white pepper. I don't, did you ever have white pepper? So no. white uh, white pepper. It's uh, uh, I guess the best way to describe it is like it's a little thinner. Yeah, But it's yeah, not yeah. as harsh as opposed yeah. to like the black pepper component. Because I guess yeah. on this, what we're smoking today, it's like I'm, I'm getting a lighter pepper. It's like yeah. I, I don't think um, my palate is sort of like um, educated enough to sort of dip in and out of the peppers. But obviously, me being a bit of a rookie and you being sort of pros at this, um, I'm just wondering, like with your sort of... Um, educated palate do you actually pick out the tones the pepper tones because i'm getting a light pepper tone on this yeah yeah uh, well mm-hmm. uh, first of all when you're talking about the arturo fluente don carlos eye of the shock with here you have the the wrapper is a cameroon wrapper so what that's going to tell me naturally is that it's going to be smoother yeah right it's going to be a smoother uh uh wrapper than some of the other um choices out there yeah but it's also kind of in my opinion a step above a connecticut so you have like a little bit stronger connecticut but it's much smoother so you have a cameroon wrapper and then the binder and filler are are dominican so with that being said if if there ever was a component where you use a cameroon wrapper with say a nicaraguan tobacco the nicaraguan tobacco would have a stronger pepper component historically okay. speaking okay so the fact that it's dominican i would even say okay if that's the case that pepper component that you're feeling I think after we're, we're, we're about an inch in, you're going to start to see a transition. Okay. And it'll be less pepper and more of something else. I'm not going to tell you what okay. it is. Okay. Because we're going to see if we can draw that out of you. You know what I mean? That's amazing. So, so j- j- just to kind of keep that going and whatnot. But, yeah. So what would you rate your Kane F. Lancero? I'm definitely going to give it uh, about a fiver. There you go. Because... When you're in the mood for it, there's nothing like it, and it's definitely a steady one. So I'm always going to be having this at least one in my humidor, yeah. and I'm going to have somebody else experience it too. So no yeah. problem recommending that. Awesome. Awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. So what's, what's your wrapper like on that? Is it like a lovely silky wrapper? If you remember uh, something, another stick I did was the uh, La Liga number 9. So you got like a dark, oily one. Yeah. 
that had a nice burn and I had some smoke coming off of this thing. So you're going to have a nice consistency, but you're also getting the flavor of that as well. So that just gives you a nice one. Not a lot of veins to it. It just had flavor, delicious, and brought like a little sweetness to it even so. Right. That, that, that sounds good to me. It's like, um, as Joe knows, I, I sort of like a bit of a sweet note. I like a sweet note to my cigars. It's good. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You, I think well, once you get past the first inch of this, you, it's going to be interesting to see. And the only reason why is I'm not saying it because it's the stick of the year. I'm not saying it because it's Arturo Fuente, Don Carlos. There's nothing to do. I'm just talking about a regional discussion where the cigar stems from, being from Dominican there. It's going to be historically uh, milder on the palate than if you've had, like last week, you've had one of the, ta- the uh, tatuajes. So it'll be a little bit stronger because of the region. Has nothing to do with the blender and all of that stuff. So okay, I'll be interested to see when you get a couple inches in, uh, if if, if you even notice the uh, transition um, there. I love doing this off the cuff stuff. It's great. I'm not putting you on the spot, but I'm putting you on the spot, right? I'm okay with being. That's on how the, the show's spot. been going. Okay. A lot of people, okay. Some of the listeners have been uh, emailing me at joehstogiegeeks.com. They've been just saying, "Hey, man, let, you know, digging the format of when you guys are just, you know, kind of reviewing some of the stuff and, and and putting some people on the spot and doing the interviews and." You know, for sure. Uh, I mean, more like a jam band. You never know what's going to be coming out. But yeah, you know man. If you want, you know, if you want a layup interview, go somewhere else. Anyway, uh, I had smoked the Augusto Reyes Carrillo, right? Mm-hmm. It's like what, right? Right? I was like, is this cigar even around anymore? <laughs> right? I was, I, I was at a retailer, and I said, how much for this? And he gave me a price, and I said, let's do this. And he says, okay. So I ended up picking up. It's actually a uh, collector's tin. So uh, as opposed to present the tin and d- d- discuss the tin, I'm going to go back in time because in 1990, Augusto Reyes uh, began making cigars for other companies. And due to his success within there, in 2006, he started to launch his own. Right? And why am I making a big stink about this? For a couple of reasons. The Augusto Reyes Carrillo, right? We're going to talk about the format, but I'm keeping you riveted about the stink, right? Format was a Robusto. It's a 5x50. Your wrapper is a Ecuadorian-grown Connecticut seed. That's a mouthful. Binder and filler are Dominican. On a f- complexity, flavor, and balance scale of 1 to 10, complexity of the cigar, I gave it a 7. Uh, flavor and balance, I gave it an 8. So, you know, if you're listening and you've been listening to some of my reviews, you say, okay, Joe's giving something an eight. Well, let's kind of pay attention to this, right? Again, this cigar showed up on the Rob Report. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the Rob Report, but it's spelled R-O-B-B, Report. And every year, the Rob Report comes up with uh, the whatever it is for the year. So it could be the boat shoes for the year, the yacht for the year, the watch for the year, the cigar for the year, the bottle of wine for the year. And if you follow it and you like kind of um, some good things and like to look at some good things, which reminds me of the old patterns of when this is all pre-internet and pre-Facebook and pre-stuff when it comes to cigar stuff, we kind of latched on to the Cigar Aficionado publication, right? You know, looking at the watches, looking at there, and, you know, there weren't Casios in there. There were, you know, Movado or, or you know, uh, some, some other fancier watches, right? So, you know, uh, you know that being said, the Rob Report took the liberty to, to talk about this cigar. And, you know, it kind of brought me back to a point where the Fonseca Cubana Limitada, which amazes me because I go to every sh- a cigar shop and those um, sticks kind of sit on the shelf. There's no movement with Fonseca. And I'm like, wow, like, th- that's a really good stick, and a lot of people don't, don't do that. But the Rob Report decided to put the Augusto Reyes Carrillo in their report uh if you follow me on facebook i'll post a link to the report but in regards to the actual um format of this now i'm not into sending story geeks listeners into a wild goose chase there so my rating system is based solely on that i gave it a fiver right because in order for you to get this stick you can get the newer version of the stick, but I got the original versions of the stick. If you to do that, you're going to be going on a wild goose chase. It's going to be crazy. And if you get the newer version, you might not be impressed. So I gave it a fiver. But if these sticks were readily available, I would definitely give it certainly like a box split with a friend for sure. Because, you know, you, it, 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 they're super awesome, tasty Robustos 
That was the Augusto Reyes Kirk Cur Carrillo. Now, what did you really? How'd you find it? I mean, I got the tin and everything like that, but I haven't seen that one around in a while. But it was still a very good stick. I mean, yeah, yeah, it had I, age on it right on. Yeah, um, I honestly, um, one of my old clients who who is in a uh, who owns a cigar shop. It's actually uh, by the Bay Cigar Shop over in Warwick. So he texted yeah. me about some other stuff and whatnot. And I was like, hey, you know, are you working today? I was like, yeah, I'll stop by, I'll stop by. And I was just picking through the humidor, you know what I mean? Because I don't go through the humidor and just, I mean, I got sticks. I got sticks. Uh, they're, they're everywhere. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and I was like, uh, this is old. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, this is really old. And he's like, yeah. I was like, I don't like the price on that. He's like, well, make me an above a bond. I was like, this is what we should do. And then and we did it. And it was sitting there. So, so it did have some age on it. It was awesome. You know what I mean? So... I, I enjoyed it, you know. If I'm picking at my microphone, I really hate having my microphone on this side, but, well, you know, uh, that's the way it goes. Right? You're keeping the hair nice. Nice new haircut right there. Ah! Right. So uh, what else did you smoke, Russ? So I ended up going to this, like, shop, and Gurkha, mostly an online brand, mm. is actually available at my hands, and I'm saying – all right, take the shipping and handling out of it. And I got these 25 sticks that's looking in front of me. And I got back into Gurkha. So I picked up what's called the Royal Challenge, Connecticut. Mm. Tubo 6x56. Also came in a Robusto, uh, just regular Toro. Uh oh. Toro in a Toro. Connecticut. Binder, Honduras. The filler, Dominican, and Nicaraguan. Ah. Uh, the cigar went back and forth with me because as soon as I lit it up, I got some pepper hitting right off of it, and it was cool. I mean, the burn was so excellent. I was just like, wow, for seven bucks, I got a good little stick going on right here. And then halfway through, I put it down for 90 seconds. We got up to go get a Coca-Cola, and it had gone out, and I said. What do you say? I don't know what he said. Love Florida. Okay. It's terrible. And I didn't hold it Hold on, hold back up there. Go back to what you did when it came out. You kind of broke so up. So after a little. The ninety seconds. Yep. After ninety seconds, we relit the cigar and it started having more notes of earth. I had a different burn to it and it just became uneven. Mm. But I got some cafe notes, earth, creaminess, even some butter. So the more complex it got towards the end, I said sometimes when you're doing the science and construction of a cigar, less is more. So I had to give this overall a fiver. Mm. It's worth a try, but am I going back to it? It's going to be kind of low on my Gurkha tasting. Yeah, sure, sure. Now, two two things I want to talk about with Gurkha. You have a, you, not a lot of shops uh, here uh, carry them here in the Northeast. Specific reasons. I mean, we can have a, a, a whole other show about the online presence of, of Gurkha versus um, the retail presence. But um, down south, one of the things I've noticed is that Gurker is a player down there when it comes to retail non-online shelf space. Yes, they have a following, and everybody likes a certain one, whether it's the Ghost, the Ninja, some of the seller reserves. But uh, we have something up in Bonita Springs. It's a giant retail smoke shop, and... Even though you're not allowed to smoke in there, everything glass case, they have a tobacconist right there with you describing everything and basically writing you up a nice little bill at the end of it. But the prices were outstanding and the selection was huge. So when I was up there, when in Rome, you got to do as the Romans do and pick yourself up a Gurkha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I also find out that some from, from my experience with, with Gurkha, which is just limited because we, we have access to so much other stuff, the, the, the flavor profiles are just all over the place, you know? They're, they're all over the place. I probably wouldn't rank them mo more than what you did. So I think that's a pretty honest ranking uh, there. And I did notice that with, with, with the Gurkhas um, and some, some other cigars that you really can't put them down. You just got to keep them lit. And the reason why right. is they kind of go stale a little bit quicker. But, uh, you know, that's the way it goes. Oh. Right. Uh, they definitely gave me a second chance on that when I relit up a Ninja a few weeks ago and I said, okay, maybe they got this stuff together. Don't let it go out and mm. just enjoy the experiment yeah. the whole way through. 
Yeah, right, okay. right. You know, so cool. Um, I had a Viaje C4. Mm. Wouldn't be a Stoya Geek show if I didn't mention Tatuaje or Viaje. It has right? to be. Even though they won't return my calls. Right? I don't know why they won't return any of my calls, you know? I don't know. Were we asking them for a box of cigars? Or, I'm not asking or... for a box of cigars. It's just saying, hey, let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about cigars. You know what I mean? Everybody's too busy. Yeah, well, they, they could send us some and we can taste them. I don't them. need them to send me some. I smoke them as is. Yeah, I know. You know? Exactly. I, I've never known anybody smoke so many cigars. Maybe Paul Asadorian. It's like, other than Paul Asadorian probably being the, the guy that I know that smoked the most cigars of anybody I've ever known, it's like, you're a very close second or, or you're, you're, you're kicking at his heels there. Me? Yeah, you're <laughs> leg swiping him. You're leg swiping. <laughs> I, I'm trying to leg swipe, but I know you can't see me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I had the Viaje C4. Format is a box-pressed Robusto. The size of that is a 5x56. Um, the wrapper is a Connecticut Broadleaf. The binder and filler, they're undisclosed. Of course they are, right? Wouldn't be Viaje. That being said, complexity, uh, I gave it an 8. Flavor, I gave it a 7. And balance, I gave it an 8. The C4 2015 is available um, in... Uh, 75 count crates. Uh, they are, they're little crates. They're designed. I love the marketing behind Viaje. I've always gone off on a tangent about that. They're awesome. But the C4, it looks like a little C4 explosive. The box looks like it's a little crate explosive. Uh, it's good stuff over there. Um, that being said, they're available in 75 count boxes. I think this, the cigar is a, a, an amazing blast of pepper. It is strong. You're going to get earth. You're going to get some cocoa. And you're going to get some more pepper. And then you're going to continue smoking it. You're going to get some more pepper. And you're going to continue smoking it. you get some more Viaje pepper on there. Right? It's a very strong cigar for sure. Uh, that being said, it's extremely portable. It's a, little, it's a box press Robusto size. So it's an interesting flat Robusto size that it is. Awesome on the golf course. Awesome with Bloody Marys. I've tested it twice um, there. I've had a bunch of them. I've actually uh, would give this a box split with a friend because it's going to cost you a little bit of loot if you try to get a box for yourself. They're available in 75. But if you see them roaming around, pick up a five pack, uh, you know, box split with a friend. I don't think that, you know, if uh, Pep is your forte, you definitely got to try the Viaje C4. Yeah, I mean, when I saw that in the big box, I love the artwork on them. Like oh, they yeah. Got the shotgun shells. Yeah, they got yeah. The C4. And then, you know, all the way to their full moon, they just have a little story behind it. Mm -hmm. And the proof is just really in the cigar. It makes you want to go back for more and more. And if I had a friend who's always split it, that'd be a great rating for that stick. You're right on point. Yeah, absolutely. I think that um, it's, it's for sure the uh, way to go. You have a couple more, Russ? All right. Now, people... Sit down. You better buckle up. You just better, better buckle up right now because La Liga number nine is coming out. Liga number nine. Dude, Woo! forever. Yeah. Now, you want to talk about opuses. You want to talk about everything else. That's cool. Don't. My baby. Don't they blast. They got into cigars. We don't throw cannonballs on this show. Our cannonballs are strategically placed. No, go ahead. No, we've got more brass balls on this show. <laughs> go ahead. Liga so, number nine. I had uh, number nine in... The Robusto size. It also comes with Bellicoso, Corona Extra, Double Corona, Pantella, Perfecto, Petit Corona, Toro. And uh, they're even going to start having these like little tins of 20 that you're being able to pick up. So Drew's kind of going to a tin little mini Cigarello type deal. Mm. I'm, I think feeling that. I'm feeling that. Aaron's Chico's right mm. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I catch a lot of flack for my little cigars, right. but there, there's reasons After for it. After you give your review, but before I get into mine, I want to talk about the, the, the tins and your take on that. Because I, I uh, when, when we first got the press release on that, I was like, uh, that's going to open up some new things for them. I looked at it from a business perspective, a marketing perspective. Then I looked at it from a cigar. I don't want to say aficionado, but connoisseur or cigar. Uh, Stoey geek perspective. Well, a lover right. of cigars. Yeah, yeah, a lover yeah. of so, cigars. You know, um, there. But yeah. So tell us about your Liga number no. 9 Robusto, which is an awesome size. He's frozen. You know. Yeah, that, that, I'm excited you know, about Florida, this. I'm excited Florida, about it. 
Florida internet is brutal. Yeah. Like, I oh, it's it's terrible. His Wi-Fi is frozen. It'll figure it out. But yes, yeah, so. everybody's outside in the sun, or everybody's at Disneyland or something yeah, yeah, yeah. like that, yeah. riding roller coasters. Or yeah, it's it's totally. It, when I go down there and travel, it's just it's just a, a logistical nightmare. No worries. Uh, we're gonna take time out and talk to you about this because this really doesn't have uh, anything to do with Russ. And while he gets all organized there, we had a Stogie Geek listener email me at Joey hey, Stogiegeeks yeah, dot com. Well, Russ, you there? Yes, I am. All right. All right, tell us about that Liga number nine. You keep freezing up on this Wi-Fi. Yeah. Here's what it is. Number nine is fantastic. I took <laughs> that with a magic hat, number nine, Hocus Pocus. Oh, yeah. It's the 99. It's called the great one, the Wayne Gretzky combination right there. With that, I had a dark, oily wrapper, tons of smoke coming off this thing. Yeah, yeah. But it puts you in a relaxed state of mind. And when I want to smoke one of my all-time great cigars, kick my feet up and relax and take my mind off of everything, I go to the number nine. You got the T52. Now that's an awesome stick too, but when you have the seven different blends, it was mostly secretive for a long time. When Steve Saka wanted to develop this, it totally got away from the acid type of fruity taste that you always had, and they hit a home run with this stick. Yeah, the brilliant construction all the way through it didn't go out even if it does it keeps its flavor mellow medium body through that and that connecticut broadleaf really just takes it to a great taste it hit my palate and oh yeah yeah I never go away from it yeah there's no question it's a it's a it's a it's a very very uh sought after smoke uh if you're a retailer you have to get to a certain level to even have it on your shelf so there's some inside stuff going on over there. Um, very, very sought after smoke. A lot of people go for that Toro size, I believe. That's the common size. The Robusto, like, I don't know. And, and believe me, I have, a, I have this conversation with shop owner after shop owner all the time saying, well, you know, they don't get the Robusto. It's, it tastes better. And they're like, nah, the consumers want the Toro because they feel for 60 cents more. They're going to get more tobacco. But what they don't understand is that uh, for 60 cents less, you're gonna get phenomenal taste. Okay. You know what I mean? And and so you can go you can go back and forth, back and forth and all that stuff and, and you know, it's it's just an argument that people will continue to Everybody have. likes their different type of balance. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So now what would you give it? Obviously it's gonna be a higher uh, a very high rating for you, the way you d- d- delivered it. It's a ninety seven, ninety eight, but the first time you smoke it, you remember it. Sure. What would you give it for the Stogie Geeks? You know, the Stogie Geeks rating system? You have a couple of choices here. You ready? I'm giving that the Oasis. Oh, pulled it out of the bag. Oasis. There you go. Okay, there you go. So they, Is that like the kick at the end? Oh, wait. Well, oh, are you familiar with the Stogie Geeks rating almost. system? No, I'm not. Okay, for I those think. of you listening at home, I'll burn through this right quick. We have lawn mulch. That's bad. You would scratch it up, throw it in your lawn, ride the tractor with it, break it up, put it for... For kindling in your fire pit or, or for your flowers. Uh, we have the, the angler. <whistles> Throw it off a boat. It's terrible. Give me another one. Uh, we have try one. Fiver. You'd buy five. Uh, box split. Box worthy. In between that, it's kind of like box split with a friend. Yeah, you know I, what get I, mean? that. I get that. And then you have fight Chuck Norris or Oasis. So oh, that, wow. that's the, been the Stogie Geeks rating system that Paul and company had put together previous uh, – me coming on the show from the start and whatnot. I'm loving the Oasis rating, but I, I'm seeing that as a, a sort of British Brit pop band that um, oh, were yeah. very big. And when they reform again soon, hopefully. They will they, never play again. They will play again. They're, they're, they're going to play uh, Nebworth for 14 nights, and I'm going to go to every one. No, they're, they're, I, they're, I'm, I'm never going to leave. Are I'm, they I'm really gonna, playing again? Well, um, Liam Gallagher sent out a tweet recently, oh, and yeah. um, he sent um, a tweet to Noel saying about sort of... Um, uh, apparently you're like um, playing at gigs, concerts, I think you call them, um, that don't serve alcohol. And that goes against the whole foundation of the band Oasis. But he said, let's get the big O back together again. Yeah, that, exactly. That Slip excites inside you. Slip the eye of your mind. <laughs> anyway. Is this a champagne supernova? Oasis plays again. 
I will get along with my brother as long as you pay me, right? Is that that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You pay. Well, he said it's not about the money. <laughs> that, yeah, it's about the money. It's not about the you, money. Did you ever see how they stopped playing? Well, I, I sort of, um, I was talking last night about sort of, um, about how they tried to break America. Mm. And um, Liam ended up on some sort of, I think he was used to doing some softer drugs in the UK, but mm. um, he went on to a bit of crystal stuff and um, yeah, yeah. lost his shit. Mm. <laughs> and um, they kind of, they didn't break America like maybe they should have done. Yeah. But um, yeah. In the middle of a show. They were in the middle of a show and he's got to fight his brother. Fell out. He just freaking <laughs> unplugs his thing. I mean... If you're gonna unplug your, your instrument and storm off the sta stage like a little bitch, right? <laughs> All right? At least like the freaking thing on fire yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> smash you know, that off an amp. <laughs> Which is why Aaron and I would never make it in Miyagi Do karate. Anyway, getting back to the show, right? We have a show we have a show here. Uh, you gave the the Liga Pavada number nine in Oasis. I get it. I would uh, gi give it a higher rating myself for sure. I know that you're a fan of the brand. That's awesome. What do you think about these little tins coming up? That, that Drew Estate, for those of you who are listening at home or uh, watching this uh, there, um, Drew Estate has decided to take uh, the, probably, I'm making it up, 80% of the, the, their entire uh, repertoire there from the Shade, Shane Under, uh, Undercrown, Liga, um, some of the um, tabac stuff. I know some of the acid and make them into portable tins. Yep, the uh, acid candela, yep. the With, yeah. blondie, With, it's a, called the blue now. Right, the which pouches. is which is a little bit bigger than a cigarello. What's your take on that? I tried them, and the product hasn't dissipated. Sure, which, yeah. Which, when yeah. you go with the smaller, it still has that quick punch. So, I mean, to pick it up, it's going to be an effective strategy overall, and it's going to raise their revenue. I think that if you're going to get away from the whole cigarette world, and you want to bring something new to the people, and it's going to be little cigarellos, little Chico sticks. That's the way to go. And Chico they're just going to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. And that's what keeps them going. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and you know, I think that, you know, the, the, their stuff is going to set for itself. I think two things when, when that happens. Number one, Drew Estate is uh, full disclosure. They are a sponsor of the show. But full disclosure, I've said this in what well, they, they – are um, great at creating categories. And what I mean by that is that, you know, when they came out with, with the whole acid line, they created the category for people who wanted to smoke infused cigars. And as someone who owned a retail shop and worked in a retail shop and have been around the business for a little bit over 23 years now, the, the Drew Estate is great at creating a category. And what they're doing, and these are my words, not, not, not theirs, and these are almost Russ's words because you already used the word. They created a category that people want to smoke Chico sticks. You know what I mean? And, 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 and they want that cigarello. Now, when I talk about it, peel back, peel back from a concept of smoking a smaller stick, right? Or some of those tin sticks there. Two things come to my mind. Number one, great for a quick fix. Great for a wedding or a barbecue, this is in my world, right? Great for a wedding, a barbecue, where I don't really want to sit outside for two hours and, and smoke. I remember being at a wedding with that allowed cigars, and we all sat out there and smoked cigars. We missed the reception after we ate. It was like, before we knew it, Brian and Groom were hugging it. We were like, damn, this is, all, you know what I mean? So that would be a good thing if, you know, for those of you who are Italian and want to cut a rug, then there you go, right? So, so there you go. But another thing I also, but what I don't like about those, the only component, taste-wise, they mimic what the blend is supposed to be. Not going to argue that. Taste-wise, it's a small stick, produces less smoke. When it produces le less smoke on your palate, you are going to get a different taste. Yeah, I agree. It's just naturally. I agree. But, yeah. but the, the Drew Estate is great at creating categories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, the, and there's a market for them. And I am the market you now in the UK. I, I can't sit. I can't go to the smoking area outdoors and um, smoke one of these bad boys. No, I, yeah. I, I, and I love the taste of cigars and you know, the... The, the taste of cigarettes, it's just not the same. It's not satisfying. No, right. it, 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 it's not beautiful. It's not the romance. Um, I know I always harp back at that, but cigars give me romance, and um, cigarettes make me feel dirty. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, you have one more, right, Ross? Am I, am I on track? 
Yes, I do. Okay, cool. I, I have I have two more, so let me, I'll, I'll go. I smoked a, a Carlos Tarano Exodus 1959. This format was a Toro. That's a 6x50. It's a sun-grown, bur- the wrapper is a sun-grown Brazilian Araparaca, right? Uh, the binder is a mix of Nicaraguan long fillers, and the filler is Nicaraguan. Complexity, I gave it an 8. Flavor and balance, I gave them both 7s. Um, the name of this uh, stick, the uh, Exodus 1959, is named for the year that the Toronto family actually fl- uh, fled uh, Cuba, their exodus, and so it reached a 50-year uh, milestone there. So uh, I gave this a box split. Now, they only come in box 10 um, there, but that doesn't really necessarily make it a fiver. Uh, I would give it, you know, if you, if you do the math, it does, but, <laughs> but uh, I, I, if, if, if you can get them um, there, uh, I, I would definitely give it a box split. They're, they're great sticks. Uh, I said a word there which should ring a bell, you have a mix of Nicaraguan long fillers. And when you put long fillers in a cigar, uh, Aaron, they don't get ashy, which okay. means if you're golfing or fishing or walking your dog, or if it's windy out, it's not going to yeah. blow all over the place and stuff like that. You still have ash, but yeah. it just, uh, the, to me, the, the cigar uh, tends to be a little bit more durable. And it's super oily wrapper, Russ, reasonably yeah. priced stick. You can get them almost any, pretty much anywhere. Um, that was yeah. the Carlos I Tarano mean, Exodus 1959. Just last night, I was actually on one of the sites, and I was looking at all the Taranos, mm. and that did come across, and I have it in my shopping cart just waiting. Great price point. Yeah. But just with the 50-year anniversary and things like that, I want to get something on the older side and then just do the comparison. I want to try it with the best first or at least above average. Yeah. So that is definitely a great product that I'm actually excited to try. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. I've, I've had Tarantos in the past. Very, very balanced. There's one thing I, I think that they focus on is not so much the, um, the flavor as much as the balance and the consistency and transition of the cigar, which is a testament to, to, to some of the rollers, for sure. You know? Definitely. All right, Russ, give us a smoke. Uh, then I uh, ended up finishing up with a Blind Man's Bluff Robusto. Mm. That's my call, though. Well. Yep. At a 70, 750 price point, was an Ecuadorian Habano wrapper, the binder Honduran Criollo, and the filler Dominican San Vicente. Uh, it also had a little bit of Lajero in it. Great draw. It had notes of the wood, the cedar, earth, and the burn. Fantastic. Very well balanced construction. No loose leaves or anything like that. Did a straight cut. Had that with a little bit of Jack and Coke, and the flavors even more explode into your mouth. So, having a good drink with it really brings out the stick, but the stick does speak for itself as well. I gave a rating of a box split with a friend, and just had a great time with it because the cocoa taste also had an oily wrapper with leather notes, and that's always what I'm looking for. A nice, nice little leather mm. wood taste with the overall Caldwell. It's one of my favorite ones, and I think you should start with Blind Man's Bluff and then go to all the other ones, All Out Kings, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, I think the Blind Man's Bluff, they, they, they did a good job. They also have a Connecticut version, too. Uh, I think it's good uh, there. Um, the, it, it's, it's a consistent stick, and what I mean by that is no matter where you get them, how you get them, or where you are within the actual stick, it just stays consistent. Throughout, throughout there. So that, right. That's been my experience uh, with that. Within that Robusto size, because you also got a Corona, a Magnum, and a Churchill. Mm-hmm. Also, the Toro, but the Robusto is going to give you that same blunt balance, kind of like the La Liga. And you want to have the best taste possible when going with the stick. And having 45 minutes to an hour to really evaluate and keep that thought fresh in your mind. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Last stick I had was, oh, what would you rate it? That's a box split with a friend. But you did say that. Yeah, he did. All right. I was, All right. I was All right. okay. <laughs> it's like, you want to fight now? Uh, maybe. May, maybe later. We have no time. We have okay. Very tight. okay. I'm looking at the clock and I'm trying I, to make sure I'm trying to get it yeah. in. I wanted to talk more about the leather. It's like, it brings okay. me back to sort of um, Catholic school upbringing and maybe getting smacked a few times. Sure. But it's like, I was getting leather out of this and yeah. I, I was thinking, 
it's like do do you really sort of get leather out of uh like out of a good cigar and it's like yeah, you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah you do. It, it, it's definitely on the flavor profile of um, some good cigars. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's actually a good point. And it's actually on the flavor profile profile of cigars towards the end too. And a lot of that. Yeah. And and, 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 and a lot of that is is because of what depending on how you cut it, right? So I usually use a, a V cut or cat eye all the time or a bullet. But some people like the straight guillotine. And so what happens is you actually get a little bit of a tar buildup naturally yeah, from yeah. there, and that's what you're actually getting, the actual tar buildup. Okay, I don't like too much of a tar buildup because it sort of cloaks the flavor a little bit for mm. me. But, um, sure, then you, but, should, yeah. you should let me know I would have guillotined for it. For you. But this is, this is a good cigar. We'll have to get another one after the show for sure. Well, yeah. We, if not, we, we, then, we, then it, Monday. It, if, <laughs> if I'm not getting the full flavors on this, maybe after the show we should try another one. Yeah, you got to experiment. Sure. you got to experiment with that. I hope Paul's not listening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, sure he is. I'm sure he is. <laughs> right? Um, he's be like, where'd they get those? Right? Uh, the, the final cigar I want to talk about today is the La Aurora Preferitos Number 2 Maduro. Hail. The La Aurora Preferitos Number Two Maduro uh, format is a double perfecto. It's a five by fifty-four size. The wrapper is a Brazilian ab- uh, wrapper raca. The binder is long fillers uh, from Brazil, a little bit of Cameroon, and from the Dominican Republic over there. Your filler is Dominican complexity. I gave it a seven. Flavor, I gave it an eight. Awesome stick, flavor wise, flavor bomb for sure. Cool little size. That's that little one. You remember the little one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep. So that's over there. Balance. I thought it was very well balanced. Stick uh, over there. I gave I gave it a box split. You know, I gave it a box split because you know I'm not really like preferito type of size type of person, but I think that um, most of the La Aurora number twos uh, are really spot on. Great sticks. Uh, I know some other vendors will, will probably uh, kill me for the box split rating. Because they say that, you know, they're definitely box worthy or oasis and stuff like that. But, you know, I was judge as to how I would smoke. Would I smoke ten a year? Yeah, I'd and, smoke ten a year. And you're getting the sweet split. notes out of that? Yeah. So that's on my sort of radar yeah, then. Yeah. You you get a bunch of sweet notes again. Um, you have Brazilian Araparaca, so you're gonna get a little bit of saltiness in the beginning. Yeah. And then it transitions over to sweet because of the Dominican. What there. would I drink that with? Uh well the Maduro I mean, I would drink that with uh, probably either straight bourbon or a whiskey. If you really, you could go uh, Jack and Coke or whiskey and Coke. So like if you were going like a Coke. Scottish whiskey, it'd be more of a sherry barrel aged rather than the peaty notes yeah. sort of thing. So yep. the sweet complements each other. Yeah, like, just have it complement each yeah. other. And whatnot. it also depends on how you want to do a pairing, right? Sometimes I like to do pairings where they contrast, mm. like where it's totally the opposite. So if you say, okay, Joe, what's totally the opposite? Bloody Mary. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like I'm a, I, I love Bloody Marys. You know, I love the old fashions. Oh, I you know love I mean? an old fashioned. So, so I love, uh, I mean, old fashioned would, 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 would complement it. Yeah. But the Bloody Mary would really have, you, you, you would kind of have that yin and yang type yeah. all over your palate. And sometimes I like that. It depends on my mood. Yeah. I've struggled know? to get a good old fashioned here. I don't think they've got the stir down. No, it's like. Where you stir it and then oh, you like we to stir fix it that. For, for a good eight minutes. For and a good, yeah, for yeah, a good, a good for at least five. And yeah, then yeah. it's like I don't want to get sort of like crystallized sugar when I sort of um, drink that. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. I, I want it to be smooth. Well, it's like, good news is you're in the right place. Oh. We just got to get a couple more components. We used to do old fashions, used to be like the, the drink of choice mm-hmm. here on Story Geeks for a while, especially when, when, yeah. when Paul was on the show. We're in, especially when, when we were doing it on Monday nights. Okay. Paul would literally spend like 20 minutes before the show of mashing the just things stirring, and, and just stirring. stirring, and like stirring he would do it in his stirring. thing, and he, uh, yeah. he would just sit there talking. We're like, dude, yeah. can we stop the show? Hold on, we're almost <laughs> done. You know, so uh, we'll have to get that in the repertoire. Because we have three more weeks here. Yeah, I, I've got, right. Yeah, three, yeah, three we'll and a bit more weeks. Yeah, we'll definitely have to do that. So uh, anyway, I gave the La Aurora Preferito Maduro box split. Um, and, and that's that, uh, we are going to have a interview in a little bit. Um, Russ, you're going to stick around for that. I'm totally here. Awesome. And Aaron's going to stick around for that. And I want to take a couple of minutes cause I've had some listener feedback. I thought I was getting away <laughs> no, with this. No, you're not it's getting like, away with that. I, I, I'm I've sure had, we've only got three minutes left, yeah, so you better I've be quick. I've had some, some, uh, feedback 
And uh, this comes from Wesley. Wesley says, Joe, I enjoyed the show. Uh, glad Aaron is set to return to the show. Oh, thank you. So, thank so you. There you You're go. too kind. Uh, he has an idea for a show, and I'm going to run this by you. Show idea for the show. During the show, can both of you smoke an Atabay, followed by one of Aaron's Cohiba Robustos? Uh, I guess he was being light on you because you were smoking Cohiba Chicos. Yeah, but anyway. I, I was smoking Chicos, <laughs> but um, right? uh, I, I'm a big boy right. now, and I've grown up a right. lot since then. And, th and then tell us uh, what you both think, being frank and honest, of course. And uh, run it by Aaron and see what's what. Thanks again. Take care, Wes. And Wes always uh, emails me a, a, a bunch of times with, with, with some show things. And, and I thought about that, and I'm like, man, out of bay. And I'm like, pfft. Like the 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 shops I know that that really carry that brand are uh, are a little bit more of a distance, so I couldn't do it for this show. But I think I have enough time in preparation. Or if I'm allowed to put an APB out on uh, Oliver uh, from United, who has been here on the show, Oliver, if you're not doing anything next Friday and you want to sit in and guest, I think we, you maybe you can hand deliver one to Aaron. Because uh, we know you've never smoked this. Like it's no, a good, no, it's a good no. stick. It's an interesting stick, um, there for sure. So I don't know where Wesley uh, got that from. Maybe, maybe he's into the Atabays and whatnot. But uh, I'm gonna see if we can make that happen. Yeah, I, I'd really enjoy that. Yeah. It's like it'd be, yep. it'd be a, a good experience to me because yeah. you know yourself as we've been talking a lot and we've spent a lot of time together that. Um, I've only really smoked until I come here. I've only really smoked Cuban cigars. It's sure. like it's like in in I, I'm sure I explained it last week. In in the UK, in Britain, I guess, unless you're a real sort of aficionado connoisseur, you you probably stick to the Cubans. No, it's like it, in on a on a standard menu, you'd mm. you'd find it hard to find something from Nicaragua or something like that. No, mm. it's like and you going on about sort of Brazilian rappers and stuff like that. It's like well, I've had a, a Cuban rapper and a Cuban filler. And <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. Stoy Geeks would be very easy in Ireland. We've had Cubans and they were Cuban everything. Yeah. <laughs> I give it uh, whatever the rating is and, you, and should, of course, you should have it. Oh, no, you can't. <laughs> they, they were all rolled on the inside thigh of yeah, yeah. a beautiful virgin. Sure. Although I've seen it on television and um, I guess beauty's in the eye of the cigar holder. <laughs> yeah, sure, 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 sure. And another listener said all right this listener john emailed me and john, is, it, is this when and, the hate and, mail comes in yeah, is this yeah, where yeah, you yeah, hit yeah. me with the hate mail john said <laughs> john says uh that you you seem to have a little bit of a conor mcgregor swagger to you <laughs> swagger right? and uh, you know what's kind of funny i don't think it's a conor mcgregor swagger I think it's an Irish swagger because if you can see Aaron walking around the studio, he does that. He does. If I can, can I even stand up? Can I? Can I even stand up with the thing? I, 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 I think you could stand he, up. He I does, think you could stand he, up. He does this thing, right? I'm trying to be. <laughs> he does this thing where he kind of walks and he has that. That I. I don't think that that's. I don't think that that's a Conor McGregor thing. I think that's an Irish thing for sure. Cause, cause that's the first thing I picked up. I was like, man, this dude's walking around like he's got, he's got that arm thing going around when he walks. I'm like, yeah, dude, that's gonna be an Irish thing, which you know, oh, us crazy Americans look look at it and say, oh, that's a Conor McGregor move. It's, yeah, 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 it's not. So, I so what do you say um, to that? So what do you well, want to tell John? <laughs> it's like, um, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling that, but um, is it a big stick attitude? I don't know if I'm packing a big stick, but I definitely wish I was. It's like. Um, <laughs> It, it, it's a uh, fake it until you make it I guess it's like um, yeah it's like thanks for that um, I, I, I'm sure I'll catch a load of stick from the guys back in the UK who I'm sure are watching especially um, PJ and Beanie who have been in touch with me recently it's yeah. like they, 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 they've been busting my balls a little bit a little it's bit. like yeah Beanie's been busting my balls saying you look really comfortable and it's like sort of you're swaggering it's like it's like yeah, I know. It's sort of it's sort of the way I roll. Like, and then, but PJ gave me a bit of stick about sort of um, bigging up the sort of Irish whiskey and stuff like that. And he drinks his whiskey without an E. And um, that that's what I'm drinking tonight, actually, or today. It's like um, it's tonight back in the UK. But um, it's like so. I've moved on just for him. I've moved on to a a whiskey without an E. The 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 good Scotch, mm. the good Scotch stuff. So um, that that's purely for him. 
uh, what are your friends' names? Oh, so Beanie and PJ. Beanie and PJ. Yeah, yeah. Beanie and PJ. If you want to give us a little dirt on Aaron, you can email me at Joey. <laughs> no. At StogieGeeks.com. I'll ask him a question. Uh, we got to keep it somewhat, you know, good, but. But, oh, yeah. God. oh <laughs> we'll find, we'll find oh, we got the producers in the ears yeah, now. Yeah, it's like, like I, I wish I hadn't come up with the names because I have all the guys on Facebook now. It's <laughs> like, and um, <laughs> they're, they're uh, not going to be too hard to find. And about, them guys have known me for twenty years. Oh, it's yeah. like, are they, um, are they in the military with you? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. One, yeah. one of them's out of the military, doing really well, and one <laughs> of them's just about to get out of the military, and he's going to do really well. He's got a, he's got a lot of personality. He's, yeah, yeah. he's like the type of guy that when we were young and just joined the Air Force, it's like we'd be in works bar and stuff like that, and we'd, we'd be very, very low in the pecking order, and. He'd just walk up in the bar and sort of lick the boss's face. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I hope his wife's not watching this with him. Because <laughs> right. I know he's a changed man now. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, yeah. he's a homely man now. Yeah. So um, I, don't, I don't know if he licks faces anymore, but he's a good rugby guy. So what happens in the rugby sort of team, it's like um, they probably lick each other's face all day sure. long. Sure, absolutely, yeah. But that, I thought that was kind of funny. He's like, oh, he look, he kind of looks like a little. He's got the. I was like, oh yeah, dude, he's got the swagger. You got the. You walk around and especially yesterday, you had your preppy shirt on. Remember, I was like, oh, yeah, he had yeah. the preppy shirt on. I said, look at this guy. I he, caught some stick he, on that as well. It's like, <laughs> I, I think I sort of. Um, I walked in here and I I I wear button down shirts. I wear a lot of checked shirts. I I wear long pants. I wear socks. Hey, somebody kill me. It's like uh, I wear leather shoes. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> uh, that's crazy that's crazy well we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna try to find raul on skype russ stick around on skype we'll take a quick break grab a drink we'll be right back <laughs> 